coming up today at Heiko Zion Baptist Church with Pastor Stanley Kearney. We value everything. We value things. We value, we value, we have to work, but some of us value work more than we value the God that gives us breath to breathe. Paul said, I count all that stuff as nothing. Uh, Paul had experience, had an experience with Jesus that changed his way of thinking. He started having fellowship with Jesus and trusting Jesus to help him. Paul had an experience with Jesus. God gives each one of us free will to think and to choose him, but sometimes he has to allow us to go to a place where you have to decide, I'm gonna choose God. Hello, my name is Stanley Kearney and I'm pastor here at Heiko Zion Baptist Church. I'm really glad that you chose to listen to our sermon today. I've been praying that God would give me a word that would bless you, that would help you, that would meet you wherever your needs are. I pray that you'll listen to the message and we're praying that you would continue to join in with us as we study the word of God. God continue to bless you as we go into this message. Philippians chapter three. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dumb, that I may win Christ and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death, I want to talk about power for living. Power for living. Everybody wants power. Some people got power, don't need power. I ain't going to call in a particular place, but I'll just leave it right there. But everybody wants power. Power is the ability to do something or to act in a particular way. Power, it is the capacity. It is the potential. It is the influence. It is the forcefulness. It is the might. It is the energy that is produced. The Apostle Paul, in this text, he's talking about power for living and being able to face days that challenge you in every way, on your job, in your home. Power for living. The text deals with the Apostle Paul has come to the conclusion that all of the things that was so important and valued by him, he understands that they are not important to him anymore. He said, but what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. The Apostle Paul in the text, he really compares, if you read the whole chapter, he begins to compare the things that he valued and the things that he called gain, profit, what was gained, what was important to him. And he began to list all of the things, if you look up at verse five and six and four, five and six, he begins to talk about, if any man has a right to brag about who they are, I ought to have that right more than anybody. According to who he was, he was circumcised. 
Christ. And that meant that he was a Jew and that was his outward expression of showing that he was a Jew and that he had zeal and he, he, he was circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel. By the, on the eighth day, they had to circumcise all of the boys. And he said, I'm a Hebrew of Hebrews. I sat at the feet of Gamaliel, the great teacher. If anybody has a right to brag about what they can do in the flesh and who they are, he said, I ought to be able to do it more than anybody. And all of the things that he had gained was prestigious. And he was known for persecuting the church because he thought that the new Christians were wrong. And he was going around rounding up Christians and persecuting them, put them in jail, killing them, beating them. And he said, all the things that I thought were so important, I counted them but dumb. Just to know and to have the knowledge of Jesus the Christ in my life, Paul said. He's comparing the things that this world can give you as gain. He says, that is nothing compared to knowing Jesus the Christ, the anointed one, the one that anoints your life, the one that, that's on the inside and he begins to speak life into you. Paul said, I've looked at this thing and it's nothing and I questioned the text this morning and I said, well, if the Apostle Paul has looked at this thing and, and began to understand that all of the things that the world say is gain, why hasn't more people begin to look at the value of what they're doing versus what God can do for them? We value everything. We value things. We value, we value, we have to work. But some of us value work more than we value the God that gives us breath to breathe. Paul said, I count all that stuff as nothing. Uh, Paul had, experience, had an experience with Jesus that changed his way of thinking. He started having fellowship with Jesus and trusting Jesus to help him. Paul had an experience with Jesus. God gives each one of us free will to think and to choose him, but sometimes he has to allow us to go to a place where you have to decide, I'm going to choose God. He will allow you to back yourself into a corner. Uh, if you don't choose him, he will allow you to back yourself into a corner or he will back you into a corner where you say, God is in you, I trust. It's better to choose God and to choose the things that, that he says that we ought to have, that we ought to do. There are many people that live each day on their own terms and on their own ideas. They live trying to do what they think is best for them without help from Jesus because they think they know what is best for them. Paul had an experience, he, he talked about it in other texts, but in this experience he had to come off of his high horse and God knocked him to his knees and he said, who is this Lord? Is this you? helped him to come to his understanding that uh, Jesus and the knowledge of Christ is better than all of the things that we have in the world. We spend time trying to gain things. People that spend time trying to gain everything that the world tells us is great gain end up empty and disappointed when they can't uh, fulfill all of the things that the world says that we ought to have, that the world says is gain. When we can't make those marks, we become disappointed and we have no peace and have no joy because we put more value in what the world is saying that we ought to have. People work 30, 40 years on a job now looking for a retirement only to find out that the greed of the world has stolen what they were hoping for. Paul said, I've come to the conclusion that knowing Christ because we know we have to have jobs but when we put our trust in God, God said, I'll supply all your need according to my riches in glory. Last time I checked, there ain't no lack in glory. They're walking around on golden streets and ain't paved, it's solid gold. 
Somebody was, had been told wrong. It ain't paved nothing up there. God got solid gold. That's right, pure gold is what it says in it. Ain't nothing paved. Ain't no sprayed on. And whatever's going on in glory, God allows it to come into our lives when he allows us that. Amen. The people that spend time, I'm only trying to say that Paul had made a comparison of the gain of the world to what God is able to offer through his son, Jesus Christ. That's what we celebrate today. We, we, oh man, I love to eat the chocolate bunnies and the chocolate candy, but I know that ain't got nothing to do with resurrection morning. I know you can look at me and tell I love the chocolate bunnies. Had some yesterday. But that doesn't have anything to do with my power for living that the apostle is talking about here. He says that there's power in the resurrection. Power for living. We have to make a choice and decide what we're going to value. Are we going to value an experience and a knowledge with Jesus Christ? Or are we going to value what the world is saying that we ought to have? There's no peace. You can have a pocket full of money and still not have peace. You can have money in the bank and still not have joy. The Apostle Paul says, I've come to the conclusion, I've weighed these things, and I understand that we have to do things, and we have to work, and we have to do other things, but we can't value those things more than we value the knowledge of Jesus the Christ. He said, but what things were gained to me, I count as loss for Christ. People spend time thinking about trying to gain things. There are people that value many things above seeking time and relationship with Jesus because they do not value what Jesus has prepared for those that spend time with him. You might still be in a tight situation, but when you spend time with Jesus, he'll make you all right until he changed the things, even if he don't change them. You see people that know Christ, they're smiling and you know they got some problems in their life. But they've got a joy that they can't explain. It's a peace that they can't tell you about. The Bible says a peace that passes all understanding. You can't understand when you're going through that you still love God and you still got a smile on your face and you can still greet people in a joyful way because you know the master. Paul said, I got an experience with him. I got a relationship with him. Is there anybody here that know having a relationship with Christ will ease the pain when others can't ease it for you? Yeah. Man, Paul said this. And because they don't value what Jesus has prepared for those that spend time with him. John 10 and 10 says this. You know this scripture. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I am come, Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Abundant living is all right. Jesus said, I can give you more than abundant. More abundantly. When you come to know that Jesus gives life, he gives life because he knows life. He created life. He gave life to man. He was there in the beginning when he created life. When you come to know Jesus, uh, if you want to live a good life, you need to talk to the one that created life. Oh, let me put it to you like this then. You wouldn't talk to a bicycle repairman if you need your transmission in your car rebuilt. If you do, you're going to have some more problems. Uh, one time I went out, uh, I saw this Mercedes sitting in the guy's yard and it had been sitting there a long time. And so I went and tried to buy it from him. I don't know if I got a good deal. I thought it was a good deal. I don't know if he was smiling at me or not when I left. But I, I worked on it and I worked on it and I found this Mercedes repair person. He lived out in the rural area. And I tried to repair Mercedes. 
And I thought I could figure it out. He worked on it for a little while for me. Got it going real good. And then some other things that would happen, I, I thought I could, could repair it. Uh, I thought I could figure it out. Uh-huh. But I had a guy that was trained in Mercedes repair. And I questioned him one day. And, and then I thought if I questioned him, I could figure it out and do it myself. But he figured out what I was trying to do. This is just the way he talked. I knew him. He knew my name. He says, sir... I got all the tools, done had all the training, and I can barely fix them. You don't have any tools and no training. I know you can't fix them. He busts that up right there. And some of you are trying to fix some things in your life that you're not qualified to fix, but you're working on it. You're working on it rather than spend time with God. You're working on it rather than turning it over to God. You're working on it rather than trusting God. You, you're doing something about it and you keep going backwards but you ain't figured it out. You ain't qualified to handle your life. Resurrection power gives you power that will help your life, that will straighten out your life because the one that's qualified is the one that rose from the dead early one Sunday morning with all power in his hand, power for living, power for strength, power for whatever you need in your life. Stop trying to handle stuff you ain't qualified to handle in your life, in your life. Value the knowledge of Christ and his fellowship over anything else. There's power for living that God gives through his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And the text says in verse 9, and be found in him. When we have a relationship with him. I encourage you today, if you don't have an in, a relationship with Jesus Christ, don't leave this place today without asking Jesus the Christ to be Lord of your life. Without asking Jesus the Christ, the resurrected one, the one that got up with all power in his hands one day and said, I got power, all power in my hand, and I give it to you. Don't leave today without asking the Jesus, Jesus the Christ into your life. Paul said, and be found in him. He found in him the apostle wanted people to observe his life as a life being shaped by faith in Jesus. Paul said, I want to be found in him, not the life that he used to live, but a life changed by Jesus. Paul said, I want to be found in him. That just means that when somebody observes him, they ought to be able to say, I know he belongs to Jesus. I'm going to say it again. That when somebody sees him, they'll be able to recognize that you belong to Christ. Not just on Sunday morning. Not just on Easter Sunday morning. But Paul said, I want to be found in him. The word really in the text means that when I find myself in Jesus Christ, I begin to understand that when I'm in Christ, I'm really not me anymore. But I become who Christ says that I am. To be found in him. In other words, you, you stop looking at yourself uh, like you used to be. And become and start acting like who God says you are in Jesus Christ. You're not your past. You're not what your past says that you were. You're not a victim anymore, but you are victorious in Jesus Christ. Because when you're found in Christ Jesus, you begin to understand where your character comes from. You begin, somebody said, the apple don't fall too far from the tree. You begin to understand who you are in Christ Jesus. Amen. You begin to realize that you're not what you used to do. You're not who they say you were. Amen. I don't care what they tell you now. You've come off the street. Don't let anybody talk you back on the street. You come out the liquor house. Don't let anybody talk you back and tell you what you used to be. You tell them, oh, you ought to find me in Christ. I'm, my character has been reshaped. My character has been molded by Jesus the Christ. It is the power 
of the Holy Spirit that begins. When you start believing who God says you are in Jesus, you'll stop allowing people to pull you back. You'll stop allowing people to pull you down with what they say. Because words do have power, but they don't have power over you when you know who you belong to, amen? I told him last week a couple of times before, when you understand who you are and whose you are. And, uh, and I was telling him, I just can't get it out of my head. My boy, my son, when he was about nine years old, had to tell me that, Reverend Brandon. I went to a program where he had, and Heiko Zahn knows this, but a couple of you need to hear this. Went to a program, and I stayed out in the vestibule because there wasn't any seats where I was looking, in the middle, near the back. When the program was over, my son said to me, he said, where were you, Dad? I said, I was out there. You did a good job. I heard you. He said, why didn't you come on in and sit down on the front row? You should have told them who you were. You should have told them who you belonged to. There's some folk living way beneath where you need to be because you're allowing people to tell you who you belong to. You need to know who you belong to. You need to know that you're found in Christ. What I used to do is what I used to do. Ain't got nothing to do with where I'm found right now. Start believing it. You will not allow people to treat you less than. You start seeing yourself as God sees you. God starts to produce in you his righteousness. It's not how we want to live right. Don't misunderstand me. We want to live right. Because Paul said when they observe me, they ought to be able to say that I know he belongs to Christ. When they observe me at my house, they ought to say I know he belongs to Christ. When they observe me on my job, I ought to be the same man that's standing here right now. When they observe me, but he said, when he, but he said there's one thing if I make a mistake, I'm wrapped up so tight in Jesus that God doesn't see that. He's sees Jesus. That's the righteousness of Christ. I don't care how good you live, you need the righteousness of Jesus. Because the righteousness of Jesus was paid for so that you could look right and be right in God's sight. I don't care how good you live, we ought to live right. But it's the righteousness of Jesus that God is looking at. And he gives that to us by the Holy Spirit begin to work on us on the inside. And when you hear the word of God, that word will go on the inside and the spirit of God begins to work on you and begin to change you so that folk won't recognize you when they see you. When you from what you used to be. And you're messing up their mind, you see. You mess with people's mind when you're found in Christ. Because you don't look like what you used to look like. You don't talk like what you used to talk like. You don't, uh, you don't smell like what you used to smell like. Your fingers ain't all burnt up no more. <laughs> sweat coming off you is sweat from the inside. It ain't bought out the ABC store. I'm gone. I don't talk about that. I teach Christ. Yes. It produces righteousness. And it's not, it's not about you, but it's about your relationship with Jesus Christ. He changes some things. And you, you won't allow people to do you like they've been doing you. You won't allow yourself to hook up with folk that you know are bringing you down. But you think you got to have them. Oh, I didn't write that down. You will stop allowing people to treat you any kind of way and your mind will be changed where you won't think you gotta have him. You know he's a clown, but you're hanging out with him anyway. And you wonder why the circus keeps showing up. You got a clown. Jesus, I'm gone. The text says that he has the faith of Christ. Watch this now and I'm done. The text says, the faith of Christ. The faith of Christ. Jesus gives us faith to strengthen you even when you don't know what to do. Your faith in Jesus puts you in a position where when you need some faith, you get a little weak. The text says, look at it, the faith of Christ. 
That's not Paul's faith. That's not your faith. That's not my faith. It says the faith of Christ. In other words, when, you, when you're down and you don't know quite what to do because you believe in the resurrected one, the one that got up on Sunday morning that we're celebrating this morning, because you got up, because he got up and you believe in him and you believe in the power that got him up, that rose him from the dead, that raised him up from the dead, the Bible says that by faith, Jesus will begin to stir up in you and give you his faith to make it to the next junction. Yes. Yes. That's why you got the blessing. You really didn't deserve it, but you, because you believe in Jesus Christ, the grace of God kicked in because God stirred it up enough for you to believe for what he could give you. You didn't deserve the blessing, but he gave it to you because the faith of Christ. He knew you needed it. He knew I needed it. He showed up when I didn't know what I was going to do. He showed up that day. And he showed up for some of you and you didn't know how God was going to do it. But the faith of Christ gave you enough faith that you held out until God moved on your situation. The grace comes in, the blessings of God comes in, not because we deserve it, but because the faith of Christ stirs us up enough that we'll begin to believe that God is going to do it. We don't know how he's going to do it, but we know he said he would do it. Amen. We don't know when he's going to do it, but he said he'll never leave you nor forsake you. He'll always be with you even to the end of the age. That's power for living. Resurrection power. We celebrate his resurrection because he gives us power for living. We ought to celebrate his power for our life. Amen. We ought not give the bunny rabbit any credit, but we ought to tell God, thank you that you got up one morning with all power in your hand. Thank you, God, for power for living for my life. I don't know how you did it, and I don't know when you're going to do it again, but God, I thank you for lifting me up one day out of the muck and the mire of the sin that I was in. I thank you for power for living for my life because of the resurrection. Power of the resurrection gives you power for living in your life today. Power to live by faith in Jesus Christ. Power to live and believe that God is going to do something in your situation. Power to change your family. Power to change your mind. Power to be found in Christ. Power to fix your attitude. Power for the right relationships. Power for a relationship with Jesus. Power to save your soul from a burning hell. Power of the resurrection gives power for living. Paul said, be found in it. Receive it by faith. Heads bowed, eyes closed, I'm done. There's power for living. Stand to your feet if you can. I just want you to know that there's power for living. Power that God gives, amen? Power that he gives us that we can make it. That's why we celebrate this Easter morning is because of what Jesus did over 2,000 years ago. He came because he knew we were going to need his power. He came and he lived among men. He walked among men. He understands our griefs and our sorrows. He understands when we're hurting. He understands what it means to be afflicted. He understands and he will give us strength because he paid the price and all we have to do is go to him and say Lord be Lord and Savior of my life forgive me of the sins that I've done make me right in you God come into my heart and save me Lord Jesus give me power for living if you've never asked Jesus to come into your heart and to save you this is your day you ought to come to this altar. Don't worry about what somebody's going to say. You know if you've never asked Jesus into your heart, you ought to come today. This is what we're celebrating. That he died and that God raised him from the dead and took him off that cross, put him in a borrowed tomb, but even the tomb couldn't hold him. He got up with all power. And he gives power to you and I when we ask him for it. 
If you know you need to ask Jesus into your life, meet me at the altar here and we'll pray. Don't worry about what somebody's going to say. If you know you know Jesus, just wave your hand and tell him thank you. Thank you. If you're not sure, you ought to come. Today is a great day. The angels will rejoice if you make Jesus your choice. Secondly, you know Jesus, but you've allowed some things in the world to get you down. And so you just want to say, God, I need your power so that I don't allow things to pull me down. I don't want to allow things to change my attitude. You may even say, God, I need to make some changes in some things that I have valued. I don't want to value anything over knowing Jesus Christ. As these young people come and say they want Christ, we need Christ. We need Christ. Because he is the power that we need to live by. Stop allowing people to hurt you. You've got too much power on the inside of you to allow people to pull you down and to hurt you. And you will allow Jesus to stir up in you faith that will just let you know that he's there with you. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Our ministers, I would that you come and pray with me. Pray with them. Just find somebody and pray with them. Lay hands on them and pray. You know what you came for and believe that there is power for your situation. That there is power. You've been wrapped up in some stuff you couldn't get away from. You don't have to tell anybody. You just come and say, Lord, I need power. You've been wrapped up with somebody that you don't need to be with. You ain't got to tell nobody nothing. Just ask God for power. Heads bowed. Eyes closed. Think on the resurrection power or the power of the resurrection. There's power. Power for your situation. Power for my situation. Father, we thank you now for what you did through your son Jesus. Thank you, God, that you raised him from the dead with all power. And he said that he gives us power and we thank you for he, the Holy Spirit, that resides on the inside. Thank you, God, for what you're doing in our lives, God. We bless you. Thank you, God. Empower these that have come forth, God, asking for your power. Power for living. We can't do it on our own, God. We acknowledge that we need you. Thank you for doing it, God. You said that you would. Thank you, Father, for touching every situation. Touch that mother that's disappointed in a child let her know that you got enough power to change the situation that doing you wrong on the job you got power that'll change that situation thank you God we thank you for doing it thank you now for your power we love you we bless you God in Jesus mighty name and all who believed it and received it, said amen. Give God.